What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home here at FigPigskin.com. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on the Twitter at NotoriousKRO with me to break down yet another NASCAR race. It's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's up, Kyle? You know, it's getting kind of ridiculous now just watching Kyle Larson be the only guy that seems to have any chance of winning all of these races yeah. three in a um, row picked up the Millie from the all-star race. Like he's, he he's led like something like 400 more laps than the next guy. Or I, th- that's probably way wrong, but I know it's, it's astronomically more than what the next dude has. So, like he I is on an just, absolute tear. Yeah. He's just trying to make our job easy. We just log on. We say Kyle Larson and then we log off. That's it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, so we're here for our betting and a little DFS look ahead. Um, Brian and I plan on being here Sunday after qualifying before the race as your NASCAR pregame show. So if you want to join us live on YouTube, make sure you smash that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications. So, you know, when we go live, our plan is what, like it start the race starts at three 30. So maybe like two, two 30 Eastern, something in that window, uh, we'll hop on. We'll we'll update you with the betting odds. We'll give you some DFS thoughts for quali- post qualifying, um, and let you know where our heads at for a track that, for the most part, we've never really seen. We we're you know we're we're gonna you we'll give you some comps. We'll give you some thoughts. Um, but Brian, we'll, let's just kind of from from a track perspective. Um, obviously, this is uh, the same people that made Dover Motor Speedway made this track. So there's a little similarity there. It's over a mile, but it's flat. It's got a lot of similarities to Phoenix, to Vegas, to those kind of tracks. Um, So we're going to cobble together a few different ideas here and and try and come up with try and come up with some winners. Yeah, it was really hard looking looking into this race upcoming because uh, they ran here something like 11 years ago or so, like 10 or 11 years ago was the end of kind of the tenure of it being in the series. The the NASCAR series, like the Cup series, has never ran at this track, so there's really no data to go on there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when looking up comparable tracks, it so many different places say different things in terms of the length of the track, the compound that they're driving on, they're driving on asphalt. So it should have a major effect in how the, the driving conditions change throughout the race, especially because it's starting in the late afternoon. Um, and then the fact that it's kind of a flat track as opposed to having an incline into the corner. So this is going to be a very interesting race. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm, I'm excited about, I'm, I'm going to be ready to watch come, come Sunday afternoon. But let's dive into it. Let's take a look at the the odds courtesy DraftKings Sportsbook as of Thursday, 616. Uh, Kyle Larson is your favorite, plus 275. The books just don't want to get hammered. That's not a good line. And, you know, if you really want to bet it, like, I, I get it. But, uh, Brian, I'm curious what your thoughts are. This is kind of where my head's at. As far as the upper echelon elite guys, um, I feel like if you really like anybody, the odds of the odds of qualifying really smashing any of these numbers um, is very low. So it's almost advantageous for anybody who wants to bet, especially like obviously, you know, when these numbers first popped at the books, there was some better numbers. Like I saw Truex at nine to one. That's Mm -hmm. a number that was very compelling for me. Uh, But for the most part, they've kind of settled at this point. So I think unless you expect Ryan Blaney, Austin Dillon, Christopher Bell, one of these guys to um, to to qualify really, really well. And for that number to be slashed in half or more, um, I I would I would be patient betting them now uh, or or the other option. And the thing I do a lot of times when I'm betting golf, too, is, you know, split my bet put in half at whatever the current yep. odds are and then put in the other half. Cause like the, like, okay, for example, Chase Elliott, if you love Chase Elliott bet half now, what's his number, you know, even if he qualifies well, six, six and a half. Yeah. It's not going to be that drastic. Scheme of things, not really that big of a difference. Now there's a few guys we'll get to later, but Brian initially off the top, you know, top, you know, five, 10 guys, is there a name that is really compelling to you? Somebody that you think you'll be uh, adding to the card come Sunday afternoon? Um, I'm I'm looking at the back end of the guys inside the 10 to 1, and that for me is 
Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch, they both have decent success, mm. you know, at kind of just in terms of what they've been doing this year alone. Chase Elliott, he's riding six straight top tens here. Um, five of his last six have been in the top top five. And then he's also ra- three consecutive races finishing first or the last two. He's been runner up to Kyle Larson. So in terms of how hot drivers are, Chase Elliott is probably sick of trailing the number five. So I think this is an opportunity for Elliott to jump ahead of him and getting him at a seven to one, as opposed to a Kyle Larson close to three to one right now, I think is good odds. And then Kyle Busch, I mean, this is this is one of the few Cup Series drivers that has driven at this track before. He has three three total victories here. Back in 2010 and 11, he won in the Truck Series, and then 2009, he actually won in the Xfinity Series at this Speedway. So, if anyone has an advantage over people, it's going to be him and a Brad Keselowski, who also has a victory here. But you know me with Big Bad Brad, I stay with him. But um, that means it's time for Kyle to dive in on him at that twelve to one number. Does that make? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, uh, Kyle Busch was probably the first guy that jumped out yeah. to me. Just just seeing that he has driven here before. I know they're going to practice, they're going to qualify, and all that. But he's also been top five in four of the last six races this season. So yeah, he's Kyle, been running. Really Kyle well. Busch is finding his old form. He's yep. really, really been impressive. Uh, as for Chase Elliott, I think it's kind of crazy how good he's been and how little people are talking just yes. because of Denny Hamlin's dominance to start the season. And now Kyle Larson, obviously winning three straight races. Uh, he's kind of going unnoticed a little bit for how well he's performed. So, uh, mm-hmm. I'm a hundred percent with you. He's, he's somebody that makes sense. And, um, yeah, at seven to one instead of plus two seventy five, I, I would much rather have that value with Chase Elliott um, if it's between them. Although Kyle Larson keeps rubbing it in our face, and we, you know when we come around to talk DK on on Sunday, he might be somebody that I finally uh, stick in my lineup. But that'll be the week that he uh, doesn't actually perform as well as we've seen, and um, I'm going to end up with egg on my face. Uh, beyond, beyond there, uh, as we delve down, I mentioned it, Brian, we, you know, avoiding, not really necessarily avoiding, but mm. being patient with those numbers, a number that I think I will try and get in on early is Kurt Busch at 50. Um, <laughs> we've I, gone I, here so many times. I know, I know. And honestly, it might be a, it might be a top three. It might be a top five, uh, top five right now. He's five to one. Um, that's a number I can absolutely get behind Kurt Busch. Um, you know, it, it's funny. We talked about his kind of struggles uh, before Sonoma. What did he do, Brian? He got sixth. What did he do when he went to Texas? He got 10th. Uh, he's he's regaining his form a little bit. You can get plus money on a top 10. Uh, that's something I can absolutely get behind. And, um, you know, his form, like his brother, I mean, obviously not elite elite at these kind of tracks, but uh, a guy that has driven well at this style of track that tends to tends to be really comfortable. And even during his struggles, places where he's comfortable, uh, he tends to pop a little bit more. And, and oh, at Dover, by the way, started uh, started 28th and finished 13th. So it, it's all rounding into Kurt Busch form. <laughs> I just don't know if I can get there with the old man. He's yeah. I just I just see a number at five to one for a top five or at twelve to one for a top three, maybe not fifty. But I th- I think he'll qualify well. And I think those numbers are like thirty five or forty uh for an outright and four or five or like six or seven maybe for a top three, and then like two and a half or three to one for, for a top five. So um he's somebody that I'm I would I'm considering jumping in um, earlier than than uh, than being patient with him. Yeah, I I mean it, it is interesting looking at the board. I mean, you also see Alex Bowman, for instance, who he was in a he finished I think it was fourth or so, third or fourth in the uh, at Dover when the Hendrick cars were one two three four. So yep. it's he's another guy who's you know in the middle of the board here who has shown this year at a so so called maybe similar type track so i think i think bowman's a guy who makes a lot of sense if you're looking to make some bigger money on a potential victory but yeah. you know he's also he's also currently plus money um you know or close to 
four to one for a top three. I mean, he yeah. finished T four. And then when you're looking at potential top fives, I mean, he's, he's like two and a half to one there. So I think Bowman makes a lot of sense. And then the guy, one of the guys that um, we we've been mentioning him recently and we finally learned how to say his name, right. And that's Chris Busher. This dude is on fire. People are just not really recognizing like he has five consecutive top tens in tracks, yeah. like in, in oval tracks that are around one and a half miles long. So he's running really well in traditional oval style. His average finish over the last six races is 12th. He's got three top tens in those last six. So Busher is a guy who's really starting to make a name for himself. And you yep. can currently get a T5, a T10 on him at plus 325, which is a tremendous number for somebody yeah. driving that well. You can get him at nine to one for a top five. That's see, that's the thing. That's that's why like things like Kyle Larson plus two seventy five to win the whole race. I mean, Those he's numbers, been that dominant. Oh no, so. he's been that dominant and he probably earns it. And honestly, he might win that go around and win this thing. But what I can get when I can get decent numbers on these guys to to finish high, um, you know, nine to one to top five, three to one to top ten. Three plus three twenty five, like those are great ways to round out your card. Obviously, if you want to go in, go ham on your guy to win the race, like go for it. But um, I think there's, I think there's a lot of value. Yeah, it especially. I mean, th this is probably one of the more difficult uh, races for me to try to do research on because I base most of my research on previous track data, sure. um, historical old numbers and stuff like that. And the fact that they have not run here and there really is not a 100% comparable track to this made this research extremely difficult. So sure. you could take all of this for a grain of salt and go complete, complete opposite direction and wind up making us look like fools. So, yeah. Yeah. If you want to fade us, I, I mean, I'm not blaming anybody, but uh, Brian and I, you know, we, we did our research. We looked at history at, at similar tracks. We tried to cobble it all together and, and get you guys some thoughts about where our heads at and what our betting card could look at, uh, could look like rounding into Sunday afternoon. And we'll, like I mentioned, we will be going live after qualifying to update the betting board, to talk about some DFS and, um, give you guys a full, full round out of our, of our betting card. And Brian and I are both uh, are on Twitter trying to tweet that stuff out as well. So at Notorious KRO, I agree. See rules 14. Make sure you follow us there. Um, and if you enjoy fantasy football content, make sure you come check that out too. We had a great discussion with Jared Small of Draft Sharks on some some running back situations. Uh, Yahoo's Matt Harmon will be joining us and uh, got some other other fish in the in the pipeline, as they say. So uh, big stuff is coming. So if you enjoy what we're doing, make sure you mash that thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know yes. who your driver is. Who are you guys targeting this week? Um, you know, what's your favorite bet for, for Nashville? How are you approaching this? Is this just a race to kind of sit back and enjoy? Maybe you, maybe you throw a few light darts and, and kind of just enjoy the, the race and, um, get back into the, into the grind next week. Or, uh, are you seeing opportunities? So let us know down in the comments who you like, where you're going. Uh, we're always down to to hop in there and, and join you guys for some discussion as well as Twitter is a, a great place if you want to chat about the race or NASCAR or fantasy football or whatever it may be. Um, Brian, what else are we looking at? Any other longer shots you're, that are garnering your eye? Somebody that maybe when we come around to Sunday, you're thinking this could be a, ne a decent option for DFS. Um. I think this is the first time I've talked about him in a long time. Um, for me, I think I think Bubba Wallace has the chance here to kind of surprise a little bit and possibly sneak into the top 10. I like his number at plus 550 right there. He's been running pretty well of late. He's got three of his last four have been 14th or better, which I know is not top 10, but he has shown decent speed. It seems like the team is kind of you know, turning the corner in terms of, uh, being able to get like setups proper, uh, get, getting the pit crew organized a little bit better. So I do think that there is a possibility that we see Bubba Wallace kind of turn, turn the corner this season and start to improve his, his finishing position. And I think this is a great race for him to potentially do that. And I'm really looking forward to qualifying to see where he ends up. What about our guy, Tyler Reddick, uh, was, was starting to slump a little bit. 
but has had some decent success at similar tracks. Although Vegas and Atlanta are, are in terms of like the elevation or whatever they're, you know, they're flat tracks They he, he definitely struggled there. Is he worth a look if maybe he qualifies, you know, in the 15 to 20 range? Yeah, I, it's hard because yeah, I mean, he went on that streak where he was just top 10, top 10, top yep. 10, top 10. And it, it, that was, that was amongst, many different styles of races. So it, he's a guy who can do it. And if you get the right number on him, he's more than capable of doing that. And probably somebody better betting. If you're better off betting on him to T10, then again, yeah. putting all of your bread in the, in the same oven there with Mr. Kyle Larson, hoping that he wins for a fourth consecutive time on the track. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems like a bridge too far. But based on that number, I'm guessing they're getting hammered because he does have a lot of success at tracks like this. He's obviously in tremendous form and um, he's hard to fade. But, at, you know, when you win three in a row, Joe, Joe NASCAR better is walking up to the window and dropping 10 or 20 bucks on Kyle Larson just because, <laughs> well, he's won the last three. Whenever, you know, let's see what happens or I'm just I, I'm. I'm just waiting for the for the shocking news coming out, like like in Major League Baseball, where somebody starts hitting all sorts of home runs. They find out his bats corked, yeah. and Kyle Larson is riding with like a lighter car than everyone else somehow, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is absolutely smashing people with fastest yeah. laps right now. Yeah. I, I'm I'm guessing he spent a lot of last year sitting in the simulator practicing, and, <laughs> and now he's ready to roll and say, "This is why you know, yeah, you know, let me go." Uh, man, that Keselowski number is really tempting. Yeah. He, he's been so bad though. Like, I don't know. I don't know that I can get on board like him and him and Kevin Harvick are both traditionally running really, really well at these style of tracks. Although he did get second. He was right behind Larson, um, in the all-star race, he finished third at Kansas, uh, second at Vegas. There's a track where style that Keslowski kind of pops at uh, six. You know, he he tends to do well at this style. So Vegas second, Kansas third, Texas second. I could find myself getting there. I just I know I and that makes me feel so much better. Honestly, if you were fired up about him, I, I'd have to take him off the card. <laughs> There's I mean, guys I, that if we, if me and Joey Logano, just yeah, if I'm all about it. You probably want to run, run for the hills. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, if I, there's every time I've ever been on Kozlowski, it's always been <laughs> turned out horrible. So, and there's some interesting numbers. I'm looking at Will Hill. They they try and boost up some of these drivers, but then they're still lower than other places. Or I saw like a, you can bet Kyle Busch or Kyle uh, Kyle Busch or Kurt Busch to win the race at like plus six fifty. But you could if you if you took like whatever you, a unit would be, say a hundred dollars, and you split it up and bet it on both of them, you'd actually win a lot more money in the long run. Yeah, so but... I don't I don't understand that. But you know they these little bets these are how they get people that don't bet a ton. Uh, to come come late. Kurt Bush is 60 to one at Will Hill. That's that's why you shop around if you have the opportunities. If you have FanDuel and DraftKings and Will Hill and wherever uh, points bet, you know, look around, find find the guys that you like, find the guys that you think we we think we're no you think we know we're talking about and and shop around and do your work because you can get yourself an extra extra few points and in i've noticed the other thing i've noticed is there's some guys that they think have a much better chance at finishing top five top three so they might shorten their odds for the top three even though they're behind they're te they're going to yep. be in front of drivers when they're in the top three and top five that they are behind in the overall because yeah. they don't think they're going to win the race but they think they'll be super competitive well, I almost feel like Kevin Harvick is a guy like that. Like he, yeah. he, he hasn't shown anything that makes me think that he's going to win a race, but somehow he's just so many times this year mm -hmm. finished inside. First of all, inside the top 10 and then right near the top five. So yeah. he's a guy that they know they, they could put in a huge number on him to win, but have a lesser number on him on a T five or a T 10. Yeah. Yep. Totally, totally, totally agree. 
I'm looking at some of the matchups over on Will Hill. They're they're really doing it to us this week. William Byron versus Alex Bowman. Don't love that. Do that every uh, week now. Kyle Bush versus Kirk Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick getting plus money him. I don't I don't hate that. Kislowski at minus one oh five versus Joey Logano. I like that a lot. Uh, what about your boy Bubba plus one oh five versus that. Eric Jones? Yeah, I like that number with him getting plus money. Is there a busher one? Nah. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on these numbers as as the as the week rolls along. Um, the U.S. Open will garner a lot of my attention, but I will I will be here Sunday morning for qualifying. I will be here Sunday <laughs> for the pod, and uh, it's okay, everyone. I will I will focus solely on on NASCAR. That's why I have Brian doing the show <laughs> with me, so we one of us can can be the uh, the genius that keeps this ship afloat. Uh, Brian, anything else from a betting perspective that you, that you want to talk about or any DFS things you're looking at before we, before we head into, uh, into, uh, the end of the show and, and get ready for, for our live stream on Sunday. Well, I mean, I, I want to hit on something real quick that you and I kind of spoke about prior to recording and it, you know, you look at all the sites where you're betting or you're picking drivers against each other in terms of fantasy points and vice versa and stuff like that. I mean, you can find some great opportunities on some of these sites. Yes, including our sponsor, Monkey Knife Fight, who yes. Brian and I are writing a weekly article with our favorite picks. Make sure you head over to Monkey Knife Fight. Use that co- fr- promo code PIGSKIN. You'll get a 100% match, depon- ba- match deposit bonus. There we go. I can say words. Uh, plus a free $5 entry, like a free $5 game. Uh, so go go do that go check that out it's it's worth your time um and as brian mentioned there's some opportunity over there you're all you're in so much of it is banked on how they finish right so if you finish yep. first you get 20 points if you finish second you get 19 works that and then you get 0.1 points for every lap led so obviously with tracks that is going to have more laps more chance for laps led more chance to earn points but you know you're really banking on the the main guys to get you what five to ten points maybe uh, so that's, that's something to think about. As I mentioned, use our promo code for a match deposit and, and go find yourself some winners. Uh, Brian and I wrote up a nice little article last week on fig pig skin. Uh, I think we won for two, um, had a, had a decent week. We're going to try and come back at it again this week. There's, there's a few different, uh, game styles over there. So go check that out. And if you have questions or you're, you want some little bit of help, hit us up on the Twitter box. We'll happily, uh, walk you through or answer um, any issues you may be having and, uh, you know, it could be, it's a, it's another fun way to add a little bit of diversity to your, to your DFS, have a little DraftKings, have a little fan duel, uh, go a little monkey knife fight and then, and then throw in a, a, a an outright better too. And you get yourself a nice little Sunday there, Brian. Yes. And it makes it so much more enjoyable and gives you just that much more of a reason to tune in and watch yes, it. And absolutely. Uh, all right, so that will do it. Do you want to call your best bet here, Brian, or do you want to save that for the live stream on Sunday? Mm. I'm fine saving, and I think that let's gets- save it because I still want to establish a little bit more information. Yes, and we 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 hinted at some of the people we like. I I mentioned specifically Kurt Busch is somebody I will be betting. Um, Are we gonna do it again with the Bush brothers? I just. It'll be the fourth time this year. Bushy McBush it up. Let's do it. I'm <laughs> I'm happy to do it as long as they keep coming through for us. I'm I'm fine doing it. I Man, think I, I think Kyle and Kurt Bush are both incredible options this week that you know, a top three in Kyle Bush, a top five or a top ten in Kurt Bush, and uh you can be a Kyle Larson outright and call it a weekend. We're gonna have to go for that for that Bush beer uh, uh sponsorship here. Yep. I, if we just start showing up to our live streams and we have each have a Bush beer in our hand, I think, uh, I think the 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 sponsorships will just roll in. I think that's how it works. So <laughs> yeah, I think I think so. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> for Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert. We'll talk to y'all next time.